Hey, what's up? It's Chris Young. What do you say we take a few minutes and talk about your awesome new Forest River Cedar Creek Cottage 40CCK? So welcome to your Forest River Cedar Creek Cottage. Destination RV, let me tell you, these things are awesome because of everything that's in them. So let's meet it, let's meet your new RV. Right up front, you got twin 30 pound LP tanks with the plastic cover. I always tell people, you see these little tabs right here? If you can, when you put the cover back on, make sure the tabs are on the back because the wind when you're going down the road can lift this up. Hopefully you won't be moving it too much since you do have a destination RV. But your twin 30 pound LP tanks will be connected to a gauge right here, which lets you know if you have gas or not. So when you open these up, that indicator should go from red to green. You got a little reader right there and the selector switch. So when the arrow is pointing this way, I'm using this tank. When it's pointing this way, I'm using this tank. When it's down in the middle, I should be pulling evenly from both tanks. But if you don't have LP, you won't be pulling anything. And speaking of LP, you got your hand crank right here and your LP quick connect for your grill right there. Now, Bobby, let's go around a campsite. The thing I like about Destination RVs, you get a little bit more space. They're full profile, so you get a lot of headroom. And you notice right here how we have like the picket fence decoration on the front. Whether yours is in the front or the back, you will have bay windows on one side. Heated and enclosed underbelly, solid steel frame. You got the rack and pinion through frame slide system on this one. Uh, be sure when you get the lubrication for this that you get one that's graphite. Don't use WD-40 because that's going to pick up the road dust, uh, whereas the graphite won't. Now, right up here, you do not have leveling jacks, but you have four sets of stabilizer jacks. One right here, two in the middle, and one in the rear. So, but once again, these are stabilizer jacks, they're not leveling jacks, and they're hand cranks. So you take the thing, you roll it down, and then you just get you like a little pad or you get you a little piece of wood to set it down on, make sure that it's level, and then you have yourself some stabilization. Insulated slides, sealed safety windows that's tinted all the way around. You'll notice on your Solera awning, you also have the adjustable pitch. On this one, you'll have a powered awning with the LED light strip. You will have the Furion side camera over here for security as well. That should be over what's known, I, I like to call it the uh, deck doors, but a lot, of, a lot of your destination RVs will have these sliding glass doors. It's tempered glass and tinted. Now, up here, you will have the adjustable pitch awning. So to adjust that, you just pull it down and what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you adjust the pitch of the awning. Just make sure that you push it back up before rolling it in. And if you do need to roll this out manually, you'll notice that on the Solera 12 volt awning, there's a little stopper right there on the end. You see that little rubber uh, round sticking out? Pop that out, 7 16 bolt is in there, drill it, and that'll make you move in and out. You got the large tires on this one with the Dexter Easy Lube Axles Nitro Filled Tires. Uh, the one thing to note about that though is if you are going to lube them just make sure you do it about every 1,000 miles one or two pumps um, and then every year have, have one of our specialists check it out you have the steel fold up steps you do not have you know the solid step over steps because a lot of times you can make this setup to be skirted or you can attach a deck to it so having the fold up steps you'd have to take them out and remove them just more of a hassle you'll also notice that your cottage has a high gloss automotive coating all the way around the RV, not just on the front like most traditional RVs. Rear stabilizer jack right here. Little storage compartment, which you'll have random storage compartments here and there. Arch ceilings, backup, excuse me, backup camera right there. And then the great thing about destination campers is you usually have a larger water heater. Now this is a 20 gallon water heater. It is electric. It does use some residential components on it. You got your pressure valve right there, which you know, if you need to head air in, it does have a collection pan, which does have a tube, which drips everything out to underneath the RV. Very nice to have color coded in here with the stop valves if you need them. The PEX piping, if you need to replace it, is easy to replace. Got the little lock and latch there. Storage compartments. Uh, and you'll see this one actually has the intervac system, which I'll show you on the inside. But the storage compartment here, partially carpeted. You got the plastic clips and the anti-slam doors with covered hinges. Another access panel here, if you do need to get to your, your water pump, like we have right here. 
uh, or if you need to get to your tubing, you can see that there. Check out your little screen filter there. City water connection, fresh water connection, and black tank flush. Underneath is our sewer outlet connection, our terminations, black tank and gray tank. You'll see the handles, like there, there's one there, and then there's one way down yonder. We, we tell people, uh, if you can, uh, you don't have to keep them open when you're set up. It's good if there's some, some water inside those tanks. Uh, and if you're gonna use the black tank flush or if you're gonna dump everything, make sure to do the black tank first and then do the gray tank so it kind of washes everything out. But if you're going to flush the black tank, make sure the black tank is open. And you, a good rule of thumb too is if you have like a, a clear elbow, that way you can kind of see when the black tank is actually clean. Cable connection right here. You'll see you got your living room satellite, bedroom satellite, and cable. All of the connections there for the entertainment on the inside. These do come pre-set up for the Furion Side Vision, which is an additional service you can get. Great option to have. You got your 50 amp plug right here. Just make sure that's screwed in and tight. And the circuit breakers are flipped at the at the junction box when you get to the or the power post. Just make sure that's on. Yeah, you see like our post over there. The back of your Suburban 35K BTU furnace right there. Just try not to block those panels because that is hot air that's coming out of there. Just all around nice vacation home, really. That's why I like destination trailers. They're solid. They look good. The coating is going to help make sure that you don't get a lot of fading. And uh, Bobby, what do you say? We can take a look at what's on the inside. are inside the Cedar Creek Cottage. Right away, you're gonna notice you have these beautiful sliding glass doors. I like to call them the deck doors. Solid glass, it's tempered and tinted. Only thing, you just wanna make sure you get you some shade because when the sun hits, these do get hot. But right away, speaking of hot, you're probably gonna to wanna to find your control panel. You'll see something either here on the sides, on the walls, or inside one of the storage doors like we have right here. Now you'll see with our convenience center, you can cut on your tank heater, your water pump, cut on the lights, run out the slide rooms, run out the awnings, as well as checking the battery, the fresh tank, the black and, and the gray tanks. When it comes to these, if you check your battery and you're plugged into shore power, but it's not showing full, uh, just go check the post, make sure that everything's on, make sure everything's connected, get a surge protector or even better, one of those hues uh, surge protectors, those big ones that can adjust the amperage uh, because you're going to need at least two thirds or 11.8 volts to run the slides out. Um, just a little nice little rule of thumb. The other thing, if you check in your tanks and you noticed that, you know, with your gray tanks, that it still says two thirds or maybe even full, even though you know that you've dumped them, there is sensors on those tanks that if water gets in between the sensors, it'll create a continuity that makes it think that it's full. So give it about 15 minutes, let the water run down the side of the tank, dry out, come back and check it, and they should read empty. If not, check them. You might need to bring it in and let one of our service folks take a look at it. Over here, you'll see your controls for your max air vent fan. This will open the vent, this will close it, this will cut the fan on as well as its multiple speeds and that'll cut it off. And those high blade fans like that one right there, the max air, they'll move about a foot of air per second. And when you're talking about really cooling down a coach, especially if you're in transit or just got you know set up, that's a great way to do it. Now, with the Cedar Creek Cottages, you're gonna have a Dometic ducted air conditioning system inside of this one, and of course the uh, furnace. So you're not gonna have the units in the ceiling with the quick cool dumps, everything's gonna be ducted. And you'll either have a 15K, a 15, and a 13.5, or dual 15s and it's just controlled by the zones so if you want to change the zone like right now we have it on cool you hit mode to change the mode zone to change the zone one and two for front and rear and then of course you know adjusting your temperature up and down for both uh, if you are going to be set up someplace where it's going to be hot outside and you want to cool down real you know fairly quickly make sure that you put the fan on high because when the fan's on auto, it's gonna cut off and on, which could cause the unit to freeze up, and you definitely don't want that. Uh, with your heater or your air conditioner, if you notice that you're not having it cut on, you have power to the control panel because it's lit up and you're able to use it, but you haven't checked the power at the post, check that first, make sure you're plugged in, then check the fuses or the circuits. If they're bad, 
uh, or if they're good and you still aren't getting any AC or heat, bring it in for service and let our folks take a look at it. Got your LP and O2 detector right there for some safety. You do have the Insignia residential style fridge freezer combo in here. These are great because they have the water filtration system. They do have the ice maker. You can set it to super freeze, which when you hit that, it just doubles the uh, workload of the compressor to cool everything down, to freeze everything. It runs, I believe, like 14 to 18 hours, and then it shuts down. Uh, and here are your freezer controls. So you can change that just by pushing the button. You'll notice it'll go from negative 12 to six. Same thing with your fridge. Just push that to adjust the temperature. If you want a super cool, same thing as the super freeze, just a quick cool down. And then last but not least, the energy saver, which reduces the load of the compressor. Um, got the little water dispenser right there. Little ice maker down here, which you'll see inside the tray. If you want to cut that on, you can. Just a great little residential fridge that makes this cottage feel more like home. Now, the other cool thing about the cottages, they come already pre-set up with your King wireless router pretty much pre-installed. Some of them will have dishwashers as well. Uh, once again, with anything electric, check to make sure you're plugged into power, check to make sure that the fuses or the circuits, the circuit breakers look okay. And if you're still not getting anything, that's when you bring it into service. And if you're traveling with this one, since it is a residential fridge, you wanna make sure that it, if you're pulling it with your truck while running down the load while running down the road make sure your truck has a charge battery light because these things even if you go without shore power and you run it off the house batteries you're only looking at like 200 220 minutes runtime with these that's how much juice they pull undermount it's stainless steel 70 30 sinks here with the high-rise faucet and the sprayers over here, you get the Insignia residential style cooktops. Now, these have the direct ignition, so you don't have to worry about, you know, turning the handle to light it. Uh, we do not have the propane on, but you'll notice as soon as I turn it, it starts lighting. Same thing with the oven. And look at that beautiful big oven. Cut that on. It is propane. You got the steel grates there. It's not recessed, so you just got to watch out for that. You could have the Insignia uh, microwave and convection oven in yours as well. Just another great addition to your Cedar Creek cottage. When it comes to your entertainment, you're going to have either a 50-inch TV, 55, 45. It'll be a big one. It'll be an LED TV. And you'll notice on the back that we have our satellite dish hookup right there, power over here, and the cords running from the Jensen uh command center or excuse me the linear series uh command center up through the wall right there a lot most of them will be on a swivel so everybody inside the cottage can enjoy it and right here you got your am fm command center with dvd player and cd it's got auxiliary it's bluetooth uh you got the quick charge usbs right here and the music we'll go ahead and cut that off i like the little additional lights that you have right here. It's also dual zone. It also has a sleeper. You got your sound bars built in. Everything is wired though behind here. So uh, it'd be a little bit of a hassle to get to if you needed to change anything. Now, as far as the fireplaces go, you're going to have these electric fireplaces that come with blowers built in. These are awesome, but they will only work when you're plugged in. Multiple light settings, multiple flame settings, multiple fan settings as well. This, uh, like I mentioned, about 5,000 BTUs of heat. This will really do a good job of cooling the, uh, the air down. Now, like I mentioned on the front, your cottage will have bay windows either in the front or the back. This happens to be a front living. So we have it here in the front with our sleeper sofa right here. And this works just like those old school style sleeper sofas. Just take the cushions out, pull the fold out bed out right there. As you see, just be careful. Got the leg there, and then this folds out, and you got yourself a queen size bed right here. You could easily sleep, two adults. Push it back in place, and then just put the cushions back. So it's kind of like you know the residential style. It's not like regular RVs that have the uh, you know the, like the fold out or the tri folds, the hideaways, whatever you want to call it. That is a true sleeper sofa. Now with your recliners. 
As you can see, my son just relaxing and lounging right here reading a book on the Allure electric recliners. These little buttons here on the side control the in and out. Is that comfortable? Yep. Yep, okay. And the cotton the holder is even big enough to hold water bottles. Mm. Oh, that's good. And you are surrounded by large panoramic windows here, which a lot of people with the cottages, you can get them with the double pane windows in them, or you can swap for the double pane. You'll get ceiling fans. You'll get high ceilings, high slides, residential lighting. And another thing I like, check out the dinette, freestanding dinette with the extendable leaf and the strut supported hideaway storage. Great place to put the plates, the card games, or the board games. Just awesome. USB charging all the way around. And let's see here. Just taking a look and making sure I'm not missing anything for your new cottage. Come in here and you'll see very residential, very clean when it comes to the bathroom. Porcelain, high rise, foot flush toilet by Dometic. You'll see right there does have the foot flush. Um, and if you ever notice that the flapper is not uh, sticking, get you some Vaseline and a glove, kind of wipe it around that bottom seal and that'll help the flapper stay. Barn doors, pretty easy to operate. Walk-in style shower here with the single surround. I got the adjustable head on my shower so I can move it like that. Bada bing, bada boom. I got the decorative sink right here too. Solid surface, just like my countertops. Hots to the left, colds to the right, lift up to open and close. Medicine cabinet right there, plus another max air fan right here up above us, which just does a really good job of pulling hot air out of the coach. And now let's cap off by going into the master bedroom. This is where you can find some additional things that you won't really find in most RVs. For example, the cadet side furnace. This is just a little hot air blower right there. You can set the temperature, set the fan speed, uh, but that does a good job of, you know, if you don't want to run the heat in the entire coach, you just want to heat it up back here. You cut that on. You can even do a night mode and it does a quiet run. It does a good job of kicking the heat off. You do have some storage strut supported under here, which is accessible from the back. You got your little vac system right there. That's what I forgot to show on the uh, kitchen, Bobby. So we'll actually cap off there. Little slide door right here for your washer dryer prep, which is stackable. You even have the separate 110 outlets there. And since you do have a 20 gallon water heater, um, the only thing that's different between that and most traditional RVs is usually there's a power switch for that water heater. It's either going to be in the closet, in the cottage bedroom, or in the bathroom. This one happens to be right inside here. You see this little switch with the red light? It'll say water heater switch. You cut that on. Now our 20 gallon electric water heater is on and running. So if you ever have issues with, you know, hey, I don't have any hot water, make sure that switch is on. Make sure you're plugged into power um, and that should clear it. If not, you can always check the fuse panel like we have right here. Hopefully you can see that. If any of the fuses are lit up red, that means they're faulty. But if you check that, you check the power, you check the connection, everything looks good and you're still not getting juice, bring it in, let our folks take care of it for you. And last but not least, let me talk to you about one of the great features of this Cedar Creek Cottage. Right here, is the InterVac system. This is cool. That little vacuum hose is in the storage. You plug this in, and now you have a vacuum that has a collection point underneath the coach. You just go dump it out when you're ready to dump it out, and you're good to go. Hopefully, this video helped you with some of the features inside your new Forest River Cedar Creek Cottage. I hope you enjoyed it, but as always, if you have any questions, our elite team of techs are standing by to help you out at any time. Just give us a call, and we'll help you enjoy that camping experience.